That's weird. <laughs> that was doubling the file for some reason. Okay. And if you're here, don't comment so I can make sure it comes. Aloha, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Doc. It's me. Uh, anyway, uh, this is, a, you know, the normal new show. Um, let me get everything situated, get uh, comfortable-cated. Anyway, so basically what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about uh, fixing your sound for your video. And, of course, 
sometimes when I say that, then my sound would do something goofy. So we're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. But if anything does go goofy, just let me know and I can, you know, give it some level. It does seem as if my level is a little quiet right now, but I don't want to like kill your guys' ear. Um, Mr. DJ Edit, a.k.a. Ryan Matsumoto, if you're listening, let me know how the level sounds. I can always adjust it here in Ecamm and just, uh, you know, kind of see how we're doing here. Anyway, so I am Doc. I like to come in here and talk to you about cool things. So, again, today's show is mostly going to be about fixing your your audio for your videos because, um, let's face it, when it comes to videos whether that's for social media whether that's for your youtube content whether that's promoting your business or whatever nowadays it's backwards right when you was a kid my mom used to say hey children should be seen and not heard mama you taught us wrong because in this game it's better to be heard than seen and a lot of people are spending crazy amounts of efforts trying to figure out like what's the best camera what's the best lighting how do i sweeten my backdrop how do i throw a darth vader in the back and at the end of the day see i forgot one element let me turn it on while i say this at the end of the day probably your listeners will listen to you more if you have good sound if you have whack sound they'll tune out real quick so in this game it's a little backwards it's a little bit better to be heard than seen. So we're going to jump right into that. So thank you guys. And welcome this morning. Welcome to Doc Rock Tips. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Doc Rock Tips. I'm your man, Doc Rock. It's good to see you guys here. Got to say morning shout outs to my homeboy, Ryan Matsumoto, a.k.a. DJ Edit, partner in crime. He's here. And I also got to say what's up to Markeith Braden. Markeith, one of two, is here. <laughs> Maybe the other one will show up as well, which is so weird because, like, you probably spent your whole life, Markeith, going, there's never another one of me, but there's two in the same Ecamm <laughs> crew. Uh Running through the basics. First thing, got to say, mad shout out to the Ecamm community. We did it, fam. We hit 10,000 members. It's crazy. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe like the beginning of July, I posted, or well, I wonder, uh, we were taking over-unders on the day that we would hit 10,000. And I was way off because I picked September 12th. It's my birthday, you know. Out of being goofy, uh, but uh, one of the guys literally picked the exact date, which was Sunday. Sunday around like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, we hit the ten thousand, and so big ups to Frank because Frank called it. Um, also, got to send a shout out to my homie Chris Wood, who will probably show up later, but you know it's a uh, UK time, so it takes him a minute to get here all the way across the water. <laughs> but uh, this morning, this morning today. We will be talking about making your audio sound better, okay? Especially when it comes to your videos. Now, right in this particular episode, we're not going to talk about adjusting your audio on your live streams. This is going to be more for your pre-recorded stuff, your post-recorded stuff, like the things that you'll do before you send a video to YouTube. But also, nowadays, I don't think people really are fully catching on to how dope it is to put like clips of your podcast or clips of your video onto your say Instagram or whatever, right? I, I showed this off a little bit ago, um, but you can basically go to a site called Headliner app and you can make little audiograms is what they're really, you know, called in the industry. You can make audiograms that will allow you to highlight elements of the video you just posted to youtube or i like ele i like highlight elements of your podcast and you know you can create a one minute clip and what the audiogram does is it puts a little uh bouncy wave at the bottom to make it look a little interactive and if you happen to have a uh let's see what is that a sound to speech converter like will it will 
generate your captions for you. Um, it will even take that, and that will be the movie that's playing, or you can actually add parts of your clips. Anyway, sharing video clips is very, very important in the social media game now. They're much more engaging. And maybe like a year and a half ago, people would argue with you about that. But even if you're not on the service, if you're paying attention to the TikTok, right? TikTok proves that people are down for little clips. Uh, actually, let me see. I was about to do it. First of all, shout out to my homegirl, Letitia. She tried to Jedi mind trick me yesterday to show the studio. So I will do that for you. I will show you today how I have my lighting set up because I have my GoPro over here and hopefully the cable's long enough and then I'll do it. I busted out the GoPro because Felicia, she was like, oh, you guys should bust out your GoPro. Hold on. Sorry, folks. Here, this, this uh, bottle is a shout out to DJ Edit. Don't sweat the techniques. <laughs> um, yeah, so first of all, Letitia, yes, I, I don't have an affiliate code for Headliner, but uh, Stephanie might. Um, I, I just use Headliner here and there. I actually started just doing them in After Effects because I can. Um, I probably should stick to using Headliner, though, because <laughs> it's, it's I won't say that it's faster. For me, because I'm an editor, I can do it really quickly in After Effects, but... The disadvantage to that is if I'm on my iPad or something, that's not going to happen. I got to wait till I'm sitting here at the studio at the computer. Whereas if I use Headliner, let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Um, you guys got me out here talking about it. But yeah, this this is a really, really cool application. I, I, I played with it a few times. And honestly, the reason why I started doing it in After Effects, I was like, why do I have to pay for this when I already have After Effects? But honestly, this is probably a much better look. Okay, why are you on the wrong thing? Uh, let me fix that. Sorry, gang. Bam. Hey, there we go. All right. So you saw my YouTube behind the scenes studio. Anyway, so basically, um, you can go to Headliner app real quick. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Letitia. You're awesome. Um, so you, you basically on this guy is you upload a clip, you know, a audio clip and it will generate an audiogram for you. Um, I forgot what the pricing was. I always use the free one. You could do 10 videos a month. Um, but I would say now I would definitely run out of that. I am much more prolific since I first used this. It's probably better to do the, the headliner pro. Okay. See now, see. Damn it, Letitia, you're going to cost me money. I'm going to end up buying this today. <laughs> okay, I'll put an affiliate code up later because I'm going to end up buying this today. It's easy, fam. It's really easy. As a matter of fact, I will pick this as my next week's topic for next week's show. On next Tuesday, I will do headliner front to back. I was just going to show the whole thing because it's dope. And let's see what Mark Keith said because he, he probably got some knowledge. He said he used Wave. It's similar to headliner. But you can also add captions to it. Uh, w A V V E. Let's investigate. You better not be sending me to any illicit sites while I'm doing this. <laughs> Joking. Robert. Okay. Um. Yeah, I got Korean drama page. Mark Keith Mohill. Mm. That means what are you doing in Korean, by the way? Uh, what is this? I don't know. That's not it, Mark Keith. Send me a, a link into the into the group, and then I'll I'll pull it. Cause right now I got Korean drama page. <laughs> anyway, so back to the mission at hand. That sounds funny when I say that. <laughs> So anybody can tell me what song that is. I'll give you bonus points. Okay, so going back to the script. Uh, yeah, Robert Hongumalo, Chonung Dok Iminida. Yes, I can do that. Anyway, <laughs> Robert, stop messing with me. You guys know you can sidetrack me super easy. And any live show, you just like you can be like a sidetrack dot boom. I'm like squirrel, 
gone, completely gone. Um, I blame the eighties. <laughs> anyway, so, oh, thank you, Jason. Okay, thank you, Jason. I'm gonna pull it up without pulling up Korean drama page first. It's a uh, Markeith is a a v e, sir. <laughs> you have me going to the wrong one, and I still did it. I still typed .com. See, I love I love these new stuff. Um, the you know the uh, what do you call that Web 2.0 things but you always have to be very careful with a lot of the new domains because if you type it wrong you'll end up like on some site that will completely break your system oh you haven't heard watch now <laughs> i'm gonna put this on screen robin i'm gonna put you on blast robert said his wife is korean he having not watched now to see if i talk uh poop emoji about him <laughs> Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you. I got the link now. Let's switch over. Let's check it out. See, you guys, I'm supposed to be here to teach you guys something. You guys are teaching me something. Okay. And no worry, Jason. The The first one, um, no weird pictures of like somebody with three boobs popped up. So we're okay. Anyway, so you, you share your audio on social media and style. You can create your first video. Yes, it's it seems to be extremely similar to headliner oh you guys just set up the next new show we're gonna do both i'm gonna try both i'm gonna try the the wave version and the headliner version and we shall compare oh i love this community you guys are awesome you guys are completely awesome you showed me something i didn't know but that's pretty cool anyway so for the, anybody that's tuning in right now, if you just happen to pop onto the show, say you rolled up in the joint late, today we're talking about how to take your, your audio, say either for a podcast or for a video or for a social media post, because right now that's the money shot. If you're doing your social media game right now with TikTok and Instagram pulling up reels and things like that, your social media video is the winner. It's not necessarily about creating your long YouTube clips. What I have been slipping on, but I will start doing more often, is creating small little uh, clips on, say, the IG page, right? And then use those clips to then send the traffic to the podcast, which is at solid.fm, if you haven't checked out my podcast yet, or sending them to the YouTube page, which is at youtube.com slash docrock. Wait, you just got to go like that. See, I'm starting to get this. I'm starting to remember where to point the things. Now, Stephanie, if you listen to my mentor, Stephanie Lou, if you watch any of her shows, her point game is incredible. She'd just be like, bam, and then the thing is right there. I always be like... <laughs> <laughs> look like i'm doing the hand jive from like the 50s anyway so yes in the in the the current climate especially little video snippets or video clips are where the money is at so something like uh using headliner or using this new stuff you guys just showed me today wave uh you can make really awesome clips you can just chop them up in imovie final cut premiere adobe rush um for you iPad and iPhone editors out there, Luma Fusion is amazing for editing on your mobile device. Anyway, so once you have that video side of it down, or even if it's just a series of slides, like maybe you created a series of slides in Keynote that you're going to save as a one-minute movie and you want to attach an audio file to it, you want that to sound good, okay? Um, let, let's give an example. And I don't know if I'll get in trouble for this, but kind of sort of don't care. So I'm going to see if I can pull up one real quick. The other day, I was listening to a news clip from CNN. And it was something that I, I wanted to see because it was, a, you know, it was a decent story. He was updating us on something that was going on with the election. And I couldn't help but think to myself, for an agency as large as CNN, the audio on this particular clip was so low. Like if you're listening on your phone, I had the phone cranked on full blast and I could barely hear it. Um, it was a, a Chris uh, Cellini clip or oh, here, his brand Celtic clip. Here's one. Let's see if we get in trouble for doing this. Very plugged in to this election cycle. And that means people are also paying attention 
to the threats against this election. You see the that, threats gang? that are coming from inside Just America pay attention to this audio for a second. From the president's wild lies about voter fraud. Okay, to and we're going to stop that. And then we're going to play a random Doc Rock clip. And there's no way that some dude floating in the water in Hawaii should be able to have actually i want to use a live section i want to use one that's already recorded because i guarantee i fixed the audio uh let's go to video tab real quick uh, i don't know if you guys have ever been to this page it's a really cool page to subscribe to me <laughs> sorry i'm just talking smack uh don't know. here here's one no just play picture in picture is an integral part see of the live difference streaming. in the sound right there? especially with ecamm on the mac and its ability to use an iPad or an iPhone as a camera source. Go back again. Paying attention, and you can see. Come on, CNN. Phone. You can see. I'm not touching the volume. I'm not doing anything. Very, very I'm literally just pulling them back and forth. Picture in picture is an integral part to live streaming, especially with e camera. Okay, so that would be the demonstration. Without getting crazy complicated, I'm gonna give you a real brief, like explanation. This does get complicated, but there's a reason for it. There is something known as the loudness standard. Um, we, uh, I wish uh, Victor Kahiao is an amazing musician and a good tech blogger. He he mentioned this in the ecamm community. Um, but there's something known as a loudness factor, right? Uh, I call it LUFS. Some people call it L-U-F-S. That's LUFS. Some people call it L-K-F-S. And it basically has to do with the sound at a K-weighted, which is an audible measurement, at which I guess is relative to human hearing capability. Um, so, again, without getting too complicated, in... YouTube videos, YouTube is looking for something between negative 16 and negative 14 at LUFS. I'll use LUFS. You can switch LUFS and LKFS interchangeably. I like LUFS because it's a word. Well, look, it doesn't make a word, okay? So um, negative 14, negative 16, that's sort of the standard for YouTube. If you are on your Spotify or your Apple Music, Apple Music, I believe, is somewhere between like uh, negative 18 and negative 14. And I believe Spotify is like negative 14. But again, even you can test this out. Listen to your favorite song on Apple Music. Listen to it on Spotify. Listen to it on Amazon Music. Listen to YouTube Music without touching the volume on your phone. And they'll all be slightly different because every streaming service uses a slightly different measurement. Now, some of them will attempt to fix it for you. But depending on the quality of audio you throw at them, they can't fix it for you. So you will end up like CNN, where a professional show is quiet. Now, here's the funny thing about that. They obviously have a team of producers, right? Because I can listen to another uh, Brian Stelter clip on a different day, and it's perfectly fine. So... What happens is whoever is editing that clip, their interns or their producers, that person may or may not be fully aware of how to level a file properly before you post it to the interweb. I'm going to give you two fantastic, easy ways to get this done. One of them is free and one of them is free-ish. Okay, so first of all, anybody producing anything on anything Mac whether it's podcast or video or whatever, your first step should be to check out what I call Levelator. Let's, oh, I, I, before we get into that, let me do something else. I, I almost messed this up. Okay. Wait, why'd you do that? There you go. When you pre-set up your, your, uh, your slides, make sure you do it right. <laughs> Okay, so this is sound sweetening. These are the basics. Now, there are a lot more elements to this, but these are the basics. These are the ones you shan't miss, no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing. Uh, your first is to normalize. And what normalizing basically does is take your audio, okay, your audio fits into a thing like this, right? And this is the top decibel point, your zero dB, and this is the bottom which for argument's sake, we'll say is negative 100 dB. 
in the middle is sort of your line, okay? Um, when you normalize a clip, you're trying to make sure that none of the peaks go past the ceiling, right? So if that ceiling, I use my ceiling at negative three decibels. Um, there's reasons for that. We can explain that if someone cares. Uh, so some people do negative one. Some people do negative zero. Some people use negative three. I use negative three. It's a safety factor. Anyway, so what happens is when you hit that ceiling, normalize will just push everything and make sure you don't pass that ceiling. Okay, that's the first thing. Then the next thing you want to do is equalize. Equalize is where you can just add a little bit of oomph to your voice, right? Um, so I keep begging the Ecamm team after we get guest feature, which is important, and after we get preview feature, which you just saw why we need, I want them to add VST or AU support. And that's where I could stick in a plugin, like an equalization plugin, in between the microphone and Ecamm in order to make the voice sound nicer on the way out. So you're going to go in and adjust your highs, your lows, kind of round off your voice. If you have a low rumble from a fan in the back, you can just kind of like notch that out, things like that. So that's where equalization comes in. Um, anybody with an old school stereo system with like a thousand sliders? Yeah, there you go. And then compression is where we're going to squeeze the highs and the lows and put them into a nice band. And what you hear, you always wonder why people on the radio just have that certain sound that you can't duplicate outside of radio because radio is heavily compressed. You got really good engineers that set up your compressors in the station and compression just makes your voice sound good. It gives it lift. It gives it body. It gives it a little style. And why are you telling me about that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and um, so those are the basics of sound sweetening. So the application that I'm going to show you first is Levelator. And Levelator can be got at the Mac App Store. Let's uh, jumpy jump over here. I did it again. Here we go. <laughs> Levelator can be gotten at the Mac App Store. As a matter of fact, if we press this button, it should pull it up in the Mac App Store. And Levelator is free. People, it won't cost you a dime. You can download this guy, and I'm going to show you exactly how complicated it is to fix a file in Levelator. Okay, so what we're going to do is demonstrate an uh, audio file that I recorded with my iPhone. Okay, let's see. Hopefully, you can hear this. This is a recording using my iPhone because I forgot to make audio files for this demo. But hey, it's live TV or is it live Internet? It's just live show. Anyway, what we're going to do is take this file and see if we can make it sound better. And I can't fix my speaking, but we can definitely try to make it sound better. OK, now I'm going to talk at a leveler clip and then now I'm going to talk really loud. And go back to talking at a weird clip. And then go back to talking really loud. And we're going to see which one does better. Levelator or Auphonic. This has been a test. Okay. So now we're going to come over. This is Levelator. The way this works is I literally just drag the clip in there. Let's see. Why you won't do that? Why you don't want to do that? See, this is live internet. <laughs> in theory, you just drop your file in there. For some reason, it's not catching. Maybe because I m 4 8 it. Let me see if I export it as an MP3. It normally just works, but, you know, sometimes it can do weird stuff. I'm going to just save this as a different file. Oh, that doesn't work. Let's Let's try this. Let's try this real quick. Go to QuickTime and make a new audio recording. Hopefully, this doesn't break anything. One, two, one, two. Okay, you guys can hear. All right, we're going to do this. We are testing the audio functions of using Levelator to fix an audio clip. This is me with my hand approximately, I'm sorry, with my face approximately two inches from the mic. And now I'm approximately six inches from the mic. And now I'm approximately one foot from the mic. And so we're going to work ourselves back in. And again, we're going to try to test a levelator from picking soft speaking audio or normal speaking audio or loud speaking audio. Okay, let's do it that way. And 
to save this clip and we're going to call it and go to desktop bam save that okay open this guy and okay levelator is being weird today let me reopen it I don't know why it don't want to do what it want to do. That's so funny. We are testing. There we go. All right. I got it. It's weird. Normally you just drag and drop it, but it's weird. So all you do is pop a clip in and it's done. That quick, it's leveled the file. Okay. Uh, I wish it was slower so that you can see it. But it's actually relatively quick. Let me do the other one that we were attempting to do at first. This is a recording using my... Okay. And then um, it also says it's going to save it to the desktop. Let's just make sure that's where I was going. All right. It says that it's leveled. So let me see if I can suss out where they stuck the file because it says it's on the desktop but i don't see it but i do have my desktop set to hide things just because i can't stand stuff all over the place uh of course right when i try to show you this it goofs off it doesn't do what i wanted to do and nor does it save it where i asked it to save it which is also kind of cool <laughs> okay let's see no, nope. Levelator's being a punk on my machine. Anyway, your mileage will be better. I'm going to show you the second one while I try to figure this out because I personally use the second one because I do this a lot and I think it does a better job. So I'll show you the second one. The reason I want to show you Levelator first is because it's free. It's kind of been out for a hot minute. But Alphonic is, to me, the dream. So let me talk about Alphonic real quick. Alphonic can be gotten at alphonic.com, right? And I'm going to pull up the site real quick so I can show you guys what it looks like. And there's this. Okay, so this is Alphonic. Uh, I'm going to log in to do mine just because it's quicker. But basically, it does sort of the same thing. It You drag the file in. You tell it what you're going to do with it. As you can see, I these are my last two clips from where I was making a, uh, a YouTube video. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and click a new production. And then I select my presets. I'm going to select this one for YouTube. As you see, I also have a preset for my podcast. But I'm going to select a file. And I'm just going to pull this one because I did it with my iPhone. So I, it should sound a, a lot worse than this. And basically... I have it set right now for, you can say, you know, uh, the output files that you want. So I want a WAV file at the, you know, optimized bit rate. And you can say for your podcast, you would pick stereo and split chapters. But for this, for my YouTube setting, I basically have a 16-bit WAV file, which, which is the best. So I'm going to have it do the leveling. I'm going to also have it do the normalization. And I'm going to have it do the filtering. I don't need noise and hum because my studio isn't that messy. Um, but in my loudness target, it tells you right here. Let's see. Let me zoom this up real quick. Make it easier for you guys to see. Okay. So in this list of loudness targets, I can select podcast and mobile. Um, you know, this is a replay system. This is TV in Europe. This is TV in the United States. This is Netflix. And this is very quiet. Um, <laughs> let me uh, let me pet peeve soapbox for a little bit. You guys ever been in a situation where you're watching TV, especially A&E? If you ever watch anything on A&E, they are the worst. Some other stations are also horrible. But a &E, I can demonstrate, guarantee you go today. Watch a &E, The show will be at a level. And then the commercial would come on and the commercial is like, bam, it's like through the roof. It's so loud. It's disgusting. And you have to jockey the remote, right? That's because they're not, again, leveling. And technically it's against FCC regulations. They're supposed to be at a standard clip, but they tend to not do that. So that's what this uh, 
this the loudness standard also helps with okay so again i'm going to pick um negative 16 because it's for podcasts and mobile i have read recently on google support documents that negative 14 is for youtube but i like 16 just because i know if i send it to somewhere else other than youtube i don't have to recreate it and that last little two isn't that far apart anyway so i'm gonna show you how quick this is i hit start production it's going to upload the file real quick luckily this file is small so it should be simple right and while it's doing that if you guys have any questions comments or feedback um yeah please throw it in the uh throw it in the the comments and we'll get that you know taken care of and answered also don't forget we're going to do this joint basically every tuesday and saturday at 8 a.m my time here in hawaii which is like uh 11 a.m on the west coast 2 p.m on the east coast and 7 p.m in london english okay done quickly actually my iphone wasn't that bad it's hard to tell but you can see here um without playing it back real quick i can just show you the waves so this was my input right this is my iphone here on the bottom this is what we're spitting out at the top i was coming in hard at the beginning and it pulled it down a little bit here right and then another one which is very easy to see visibly is uh i'll get to that to troy um Another one you can see visibly is where I got kind of soft here and it picked it up. So that's the soft area right around in here. But up here, I was able to pick that up. And then, um, yeah, you can just see as it's pulling sort of the peaks and troughs. So all I'm going to do is download this real quick. Actually, I can play it from here. I can kind of show you the difference. So we're starting the top one. Audio files for this demo. But hey, it's live TV or is it live Internet? It's just live show show anyway what we're gonna do is take this, this is file and see one. if we can make it sound better and i can't fix my speaking speaking but we can definitely try to make it sound better okay now i'm going to talk at a leveler clip and then now i'm going to talk really loud and go back to talking at a weird clip and then go back to talking really loud and we're going to see which one does better levelator or Auphonic. this has been a test i'll, I'll play the the uh, bottom one for a second here. Make it sound better. And I can't fix my speaking, but we can definitely try to make it sound better. Okay, now I'm going to talk at a leveler clip. And then now I'm going to talk really loud and go back to talking at a weird clip. And then go back to talking really loud. And we're going to see which one does better. Level later. Now, I don't know if you noticed that. And then, again, it could be hard to pick up because YouTube and streaming is already compressing this. But I can definitely hear the difference where you come out, where I came in really soft. Now, there are occasions where you'll record an entire piece and it's way quiet. And just going in and cranking the audio up and say Final Cut, uh, Premiere, After Effects, uh, iMovie, LumaFusion, Adobe Rush, whatever you're using, any of the above can cause that to, I guess, get blown out and distorted. Um, there's a reason why when I record with my my podcast, I use a recorder that has a 32-bit float. Um, that just gives you more room. You can almost send it the most rubbish audio and be able to fix it. But this will help get that sound to the right level. Now, even if in this particular recording, because my voice is kind of big it wasn't too far off but i can still hear it it's what youtube wants right so going into Auphonic or level later and spitting it out at the right spot will just make it sound better now troy brings up a very valid point troy brings up Auphonic does have a de desktop version just a psa i i used to use the desktop version troy and i'll tell you why i stopped i hate java because i ran tech support for years at apple store as genius and because i've been supporting computers since uh pcs were big ugly gray boxes i hate java i hate installing java on any machine if i don't have to so on the mac mini because i don't use it as a production machine i have java there for these cases but i don't want to move the audio there and back so 
Yeah, I just don't like Java. I w if they come up with a version that doesn't use Java, I'll go back to using it. But Java to me is a headache because it breaks other stuff. <laughs> so that's the reason why I don't use a desktop version. But it, it says uh, right here. Oh, wait, no. On, on one of the pages when you're in here, it tells you that you can try the desktop version. Uh, they're always promoting it. But yeah, I don't really like it. So uh, let's get into what pricing is on Alphonic real quick. Um, I think I'm right around here on the Iphonic S plan because it gives you up to nine hours to process for a month. But if you're under that, if you're under two hours, like you do short five minute videos, uh, you could spit out 10 of those. I take that back. I can't even add. Good Lord. You can spit out 24 of those for free because, because they give you two hours for free every month. Um, because I'm doing the podcast plus YouTube clips, plus, uh, you know, if I recorded, say, even this live video, when I'm done and I press end stream, it automatically, you know, puts it up and is ready to replay. But if for some reason the audio is bad, I would stop that process, take the video down from YouTube or pull the video from the save recording from Ecamm here and throw it at Level Later or Alphonic. And trust me, mine would be Alphonic. I like it better. Um, and have it fix the file and then re-upload it to YouTube and everything's gravy. So it is a fantastic way to fix audio, right? And I've listened to plenty of streams and some of them are just so quiet. I'm like, oh, just a little bit more volume and this would be awesome. Especially when I am trying to listen on my phone. So that kind of that kind of helps out a lot. Again, check out Alphonic. I'll put the links in the show notes and uh, also check out Levelator. Now, there are just some things that you can do. And I guess uh, this comes up a lot in the community where we're talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to how to say it without without making trouble to anyone. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we talk about it in the community a lot about. Basically, um, I just got sidetracked. I lost it. Never mind. We'll come back to it. But it had to do with with audio for this for the stuff. Um, yes, uh, Troy. Troy says he's sharing this in live event marketeers. I did post the show, uh, the sort of the show pre post like the event. I did post that the event was coming up. Hey, I just realized something. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I just realized something. Hold on one second. I just realized for whatever reason, the YouTube comments were broken. They're not coming in. Let me uh, read some of these out real quick. Man, we're, we're way back. It, we're way, way back. Uh, let's see. First of all, uh, DJ Edit says I'm wearing my fancy specs today. Hello, that's funny. Uh, Jim Million says hello, hello. Uh, Larkin's Layer said how's it? How's it, Larkin Layer? Um, uh, Chris Woods said, I'll catch up later. He needs, he needs to work on this point game. <laughs> um, uh, DJ Edit said it was a terrible audio level. And they're, they're again, they're talking about audio level and, oh, DJ Edit said negative zero. Uh, he didn't learn that in math class. I know. Uh, I don't know why, uh, restream comments broke today. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that later. Anyways. Oh, yes. So DJ Eddie said, what I should have done was showing you guys a waveform before and after. So that way you can see that. And yes, that is true. And if you are editing in, say, your Final Cut or what the heck was that? If you're editing in Final Cut or you're editing in like Premiere or even iMovie, you can see sort of the way this and you can see the waveform ahead of time. And sometimes being able to visualize that does really help. So uh, uh, Ryan brings up a very good point that, yes, doing it that way can can work. And then he said the playback is better than the mic. Yes, um, Chris, this is correct because it 
unfortunately, we don't have live metering in YouTube. I mean, sorry, in Ecamm. We have to look at this little guy and guess where you're at. In theory, when it turns to yellow, you should be at negative 12. At the end of yellow, you should be at negative nine and then maybe negative six. And then in the red, you should be above negative six. In theory, that's the metering on ECAM, but there's no numbers. So I'm guessing. And I wish they would fix that. I, I understand completely why they don't do that. They're trying to make this application so that general neophytes can just pick it up and using the, what's the word? The metaphor of uh, green, yellow, and red, you know it's okay. But yeah, I think it's <laughs> I think it's easier to teach people that you want between negative 12 and negative six. If your audio is here, you're basically going to sound good. At negative nine, you're classically perfect to audio engineers. And once you start banging at negative three, then you're getting into the peaking. But all we get on our thing is green, yellow, red. And so it's kind of hard to set levels off of green, yellow, red. There's not even a number in there, I don't think. It's just a slider. So, yeah, that makes it a lot harder, you know. Um, so there is a cheat. And this is what I was trying to remember. So thank you, Chris, for helping me remember what I didn't remember. In Ecamm, we talk about using loopback a lot. And I didn't want to do it for this particular demo, but I should have. In loopback, I can actually add a VST, which brings up a meter. So let me show you a free meter. Uh... Let's see, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. This is the one that Victor Cahial recommends, and I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it too. So my screens are out of order now because I pressed the wrong thing. Bam. And let's get that zoom back to normal. Pop, 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 pop. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, Yulene, that's a weird name, but you can sort of meter on the fly with this because you can plug this in in the middle of loopback. And uh, let me pull up loopback real quick so you guys know what this is. Uh, R O U G E N A M E O. I can't spell amoeba. <laughs> and here's you can use loopback or audio hijack for this, but in this particular example, we'll talk about loopback. Basically, what it would allow me to do is throw a VU meter in line, and then I can see my levels. I can see what they're doing on the fly while I'm trying to, you know, sort of do this. So it's a, it's a little bit more helpful. But again, after we get guest fixed and after we get um, preview screen fixed, I will continue to bug the boys to put in VU meters because... I would rather teach folks how to do it correctly than let everybody fly blind. And here. Let's see. Uh, Taekwondo saying. Oh, um, DJ Edit says, especially for the folks that understand audio the way you and I do, visualizing the waveform can help you know where you are and change, you know, the normalization levels. Yes, very much so. And it says, uh, it's pretty cool to know next week uh, we should have a chat on your show. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks. And it was throwing me off because it said Creative Ways Taekwondo, but I just guessed that that's you. It's because it's who else is taekwondo on my channel okay and back to this side <laughs> troy said uh yes you did you can share uh live but not all streams to the group as long as it's about business marketing and stream teaching info oh good to know so if you guys don't know uh troy has a group on facebook it is called live event marketers so if you're doing live streaming around the topics that we just spoke of on the other one here business marketing or live streaming tech info you can join the group and you can post info there and you can watch other streams too and sort of expand your knowledge okay 
So, I think we got it. Um, yes, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and do uh, a, another version sort of with Levelator in line. Sorry, take that back. With Loopback or Audio Hijack in line and show you what I mean by looking at your meters while you do this. It could really, really help, especially if you have guests or you're bringing in remote guests. Um, tomorrow's show, which I always do, is a, a total different brand, though. It's my DJ's live streaming show. Uh, every week, uh, Ryan has to come in and tell uh, Scott or I that our levels are, <laughs> you know, sort of mismatched because that's Skype. Skype does that, you know. So it can be a, a sort of pain in the butt. And uh, thank you, Ryan. Good to see you. Thank you for coming by, as always. So... This is where, like, if you have a metering situation, you can kind of line the meters up and get them. And it's always going to be difficult to get the two audios to sound the same because you have two different people with two li different levels of oomph in their voice. Um, yeah, that's always just going to be a challenge, right? So there's that. And this whole time I was playing around, I forgot to show off my my uh, A10 Mini action i got going here so that's the mac mini and there's that and i was going to add the gopro but i forgot to turn it on but yeah i got the a10 mini kind of sort of working so that'll be coming up soon so if you guys are paying attention to the show don't forget a10 mini action i will be doing a full talk about that sooner or later it's coming it's absolutely coming so that's been that uh it's point of business to run down before we get out of here first of all this was my question of the week i i asked this in the group i'm going to ask it here i want you to leave your comments in the bottom um i'll kind of know by where you answer the question but here goes the question of the week do you prefer watching live streams in facebook or youtube because because of things like what happened today where the YouTube chat just automatically stopped working, where I couldn't post the comments, I might separate them. I might send, say, one feed on Tuesday or Saturday to Facebook and the opposing feed on Tuesday or Saturday to YouTube and keep them separate and just concentrate that way. Um, I like Restream. It's fantastic service. Uh, but again, something goofy like today would happen, the comments break, and then I'm talking only to people on Facebook, and nobody on YouTube got any love. Luckily, they're all my friends, so they're cool with me, and they're not going to hate me for missing out talking to them, because <laughs> I don't know why. But I like, personally, okay, let me, let me tell you my beliefs. I like watching on YouTube, because I have YouTube Premium. So when I am ingesting your stream on my mobile device... I can swipe, you know, answer a message or look up something on the internet or whatever because background play works if you have YouTube Premium, which used to be called YouTube Red. So I prefer almost absorbing all of my learning content. I prefer absorbing on YouTube because background play is a thing. Um, so that's my, you know, sort of specific. Also, YouTube supports sort of rewind and playback you know backing up and some stuff it doesn't always work in facebook and lastly youtube the quality is higher you know, facebook compresses the living crap so if you're trying to see a screen element like someone's showing you a piece of software sometimes i can't tell what the menu says uh you have to literally freeze it and sort of work your way around and then Jackie says, which is funny because I can't normally I can bring your comment up, Jackie. But Jackie says on YouTube because I don't have Facebook. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. That is mad appreciated because <laughs> that's true. A lot of people don't have Facebook. Uh, so, yeah, that's a common conversation out here. How I suggest fixing it, like finding your audio where you need to find your audio find your audio find your audience where you need to find your audience is do what i'm about to tell you about right now i have a email list i'm just starting to grow it but this is the answer go to uh I, just because i can't pull it up right now i'm trying to grab it so i can put it on the screen you want to go to dcrk.me slash dun, 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 dun. here we go i'm going to just make a I'm going to make one of these guys and put it on the screen. There we go. 
you go to dcrk.me slash LGL2000. LGL, let's get live. That's the show. And then 2000, uh, 2020. 2000. 2020, because, well, this thing, <laughs> this 365-day window of madness is 2020. Oh, I never saw this one coming. Anyway, so the, the goal here is go to this little link. Add yourself to the email list. I will share out things before I get the video done. I will spitball ideas with you guys. I will send you deals, special tips. Uh, you can use that list to ask me questions, and I'll get you know uh, just special shows out for you. But I'm growing the list. Why? Because if something should happen with Facebook or YouTube, or maybe this becomes a thing we do on Reels, or they fix Instagram Live so I can go from the computer, it's much easier to speak to everybody, regardless of which platform you found them on, Jackie on YouTube, Troy on Facebook. I can just send the email and then it's, you get it. You just know. Or like if I find out, you know, like yesterday that Best Buy just got a metric crap ton of uh, CamLink 4Ks in stock, I would be able to let you know before I tell everybody in the group so the people in my tribe can get that info quickly before everybody runs out. Um, also, there'll be contests, you know, there'll be giveaways, whatever. So the, the the email list is the way to go. I preach this to my DJs all the time because my DJs are always talking to me about getting muted on Facebook or getting muted on, uh, say, Instagram Live and not knowing how to send their tribe to Twitch where you don't get muted. But if you had your email list together, you can put those instructions in there and tell people, yes, I know you love Facebook. I know that's where you live. But if you want to see this DJ set uninterrupted, you're going to want to be on Twitch. And so that's how you get people to migrate because they all say, oh, but if I do it on Facebook, I get 300 people watching. But if I do it on Twitch, there's nobody watching because my crowd doesn't know. And I get that. But that's where the email list comes in. So this email list is created with Mail Light, not sponsor. They're my favorite of the new guys. I used to be MailChimp, MailChimp, MailChimp. I'm loving Mailer Light right now. It's a lot easier. It's cleaner. It's simple to use. So if you're looking to start your email list and get your groove going that way, check out Mailer Light. If not, just click on mine. And that'll be cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about real quick before we get out of here, my homie, Stephanie Liu, she has created a fantastic piece of software that helps, you know, curmudgeon creators like myself. It, it helps you make your video scripts, okay? And this is a video script maker, and I'm pulling up the link for you guys right now because I, I always do this. I had it, and then I moved the page while we were doing the demo, and then I forgot where I put it. So let's go ahead and put this back up. Anyway, uh, video script maker will help you get your game together and... Basically, what it's for is it gives you a sort of like uh, Google Sheets view and you go in and you add your links, you add your topics. It helps you, you know, sort of attempt to stay focused so your show doesn't look as crazy and as messy as me. So if you click the link that's on the bottom right now and again, DCRK, that's my URL shortener and uh, Doc VSM Video Script Maker. You can go and check out Video Script Maker. It is amazing. If you produce any type of videos, whether it's uh, webinars, uh, seminars, like whatever, Video Script Maker is very, very helpful. I, oh, man, you think this was bad? You should have seen me before I started using Video Script Maker. I'd be all over the place. So make sure you check that out. Last, you can support the show by checking out the uh, Amazon shop down there that's where i put any of the hardware we talk about you know i'll be doing reviews and stuff that's on my channel most of those links and those items can be found on the shop there so just go to uh, amazon.com slash shop slash doc rock and that's a good way for you to support the channel so without further ado i'm going to stop messing with you guys and absorbing all of your time frame i want to thank you guys so much for being here don't forget Every Tuesday, Saturday. Tuesday is when we're going to talk about tools or, you know, what we did today. Like these tools will help you make your shows better, your recorded videos better, your social media posts better. This is what we talk about um, using video to basically enhance your business. That's going to happen on Tuesdays. On Saturdays is a lot more question to answer. You come up and say, Doc, how do you get this lighting to work? Like 
my lighting's not doing what I wanted to do or my sound's not doing what I wanted to do, that's the show. Come in on Saturday, bring your questions, and we will kind of like unscrew whatever kind of madness is happening on your show. Uh, Chris, I know I'll see you Saturday, brother. I really appreciate you always being here, always being here for the support. Robert, again, I always appreciate you. I know I'll see you tomorrow morning on the DJ's live streaming show. Uh, if you're into music, folks, or again, we do a lot of business advice too. Sometimes we just talk about music. Sometimes we talk about advice. That shows tomorrow on the exact same spot. That's the DJ's live streaming show. That'll be here at uh, 9 a.m. my time. You guys can do your calculation. I'm GMT minus 10. Anyway, I'm Doc Rock. I appreciate you guys so much. We will see you again soon. And, oh, I forgot one more. See, I always mess this up. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That's where the good good happens. And <laughs> how do I get level later to work? Oh, Robert, you're funny. See, I got sidetracked again. I will just say, ask your wife what does Pablo mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway make sure you come and check out the, the channel it's youtube.com slash doc rock if you haven't done so already subscribe we're getting that close i am like a hundred folks away from five thousand i get no button or anything i just want to be able to say i got five thousand so i need a hundred more of you guys to press that button if you press that button Boom. But you also get to know when I go live and when the shows come up. And yes, Robert, that's exactly what it means. <laughs> oh, God. This is going to be fun. Thank you, Robert. Robert's going to be blowing up all of my shows now with his Hongu flex. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys. I see you again soon. Aloha. Ciao, ga. Onion, you We'll see you again soon. I appreciate you.